I observed Mr. McEwen at Midland High School in Midland is located in Pleasant Plains, Arkansas. And the classes that I observed in the afternoons were geometry. Uh, Midland is a, uh, is a 1A classification school, so one of the smaller schools in the state. And also, 69.6% uh, .6 of the students are on free or reduced lunches. And 70% is the cutoff for the state uh, for funding for the schools, so Midland missed it by just four tenths of a percentage. Uh, in the seating arrangements of Mr. McEwen's room, uh, I noticed a problem-solving picture that really, if that really put a lot of use into his, that he really used in his classrooms. Uh, it had all the possible, uh, possible uh, solving strategies that students could use during during class time while they were uh, attempting to do all, uh, all sorts of problems. Uh, that was definitely a grow because he definitely integrated that into his classroom strategy and uh, when he was on the fly giving students one-on-one -on -one learning, he, he uh, pertained to that picture quite a bit. A grow would be, uh, in the, for his classroom, would be uh, students would get in the habit of pushing desks together to be able to talk during class or just interact with their friends and then be that much closer to horse play with or uh, to just uh, to uh, just mess around with one another while Mr. McEwen was trying to walk, trying to have a discussion with the class. Uh, the man management strategy used in the classroom. Uh, a good thing that I noticed that he did was he projected classwork throughout the class. Uh, after they got done with an in, uh, done with an in class assignment, he checked the work on the first student that was done that had all the correct answers. He projected it uh, up onto the board in the class, so all the other students could check their answers using the students' work. But uh, a grow a grow on a management strategy would be discipline for sure, because the the students really push their uh, really push their limits with the with the teacher and. Uh, and they, they noticed that he wasn't real strict on behavior, so they really used that to their advantage and would use phones and would talk and would sleep and wouldn't do their wouldn't do the assignment that was that was given to them. Instead they would uh, they would do other unnecessary things. Uh, in the classroom, what does it mean to teach and learn in this classroom? Uh, a glow on this for sure would be the effort that he put puts on his lessons plans. He said in his free in his free time he actually enjoyed uh, putting together new lesson plans and finding new website, new educational websites that he could use in the process of of uh, of uh, developing a lesson, and he really emphasized learning while while he was giving his giving his lesson. He uh, you could tell he really was trying to encourage these students to learn more and to uh, stay on track. But he really had his, had their best interests at heart any time that he did uh, any time he did develop a lesson. Uh, I wouldn't say there is a grow for this, and and uh, just because he, he does put in a lot of effort into his job, into out of class and in class, he really he really helped those students succeed, and uh, and while out of class, he actually he put in he told me he put in a, a lot a lot of effort into developing lessons for for the classroom. Uh, what kinds of learning activities took place in the classroom? Uh, a glow would definitely be more discussion instead of lecture. He uh, he really involved the class the whole the whole period. Uh, instead of just talking at them and trying to teach them things while they were just sitting there listening, he actually involved them all that he could. And instead of him just telling them how to how to answer a, a, a specific question, they actually talked themselves through it with his help, which was which was really neat to see. Uh, a grow for the a grow would be uh, really none just because he sets a great he set a great learning tone in his classroom. Uh, the lessons that he prepared for them were were very well executed, and the students seem to really catch on to the way he really uh, to the way that he teaches, and uh, and uh, they really they they it seemed like they they were very. 
they uh, they learned quite a bit from him in the way that he teach. Just because he wasn't teaching them, they were trying. They were actually teaching themselves. Uh, the classroom climate was. He made it a very enthused classroom climate. He. Uh, he was very enthused about teaching. He wanted to get them enthused about learning, but with most students, that was that was harder, uh, easier said than done. Uh, he uh, there was one incident after class. After classes were over, he had, he was actually teaching me stuff about one of my math classes that I have and that I'm currently taking right now. And he actually got very excited just to teach me some new things, just because he loves his job that much and. He tries to. He just tries. Anytime that he can teach anybody anything, he just he just gets real excited about it. Uh, a grow for a classroom climate would be students. The students do push their limits quite a bit with him. They uh, they uh, get off topic. They sleep. They play on their phones a lot, a lot, uh, and uh, they uh, they really just horseplay quite a bit while he's while he's giving his lesson. They uh, they get off topic real quick and and it doesn't take any time at all for the whole class to get loud and un, un not participating and uh, and it seems like students feet really fed off one another in his class. He was just real he's just real lenient and if one student if a couple students over here were acting up then a few more were going to feed off of them and uh, it was just uh, he sometimes he just let it get get out of hand. Uh, uh, were there any students resisting learning? Uh, a glow for this was teacher handles handles questions very well. Uh, I got to see one student in particular uh, ask ask questions in a very up. She, I mean, she was upset and she was asking, "Why do we need this? Why do we need to learn this? When am I ever going to use this in real life? Why can't we Why can't we learn real real life stuff in school?" And I got to see how a teacher handled handled those questions because I know those are very I mean they're very difficult to answer because there's really nothing there's nothing that you can say to please them because uh, because once a, I feel like once a student asks that I feel like they're I mean it's, they're going to be really hard to convince that it's good for them to, it's actually good for them to learn the things that they are and actually be there uh, a grow would be for a teacher, a teacher, uh, the teacher allowed the students to resist, and instead of putting his foot down or getting stern with them, he just kind of allowed it to happen. And uh, I feel like once the students realize that you're going to allow allow that to happen in the classroom, I feel like the the battle's already lost. So from then on, they're act, they're really going to try to take advantage of that because they know they know that they can, and they and they know that they will. Uh, the teaching approach used in Mr. McEwen's classroom was uh, a glow for it would be a great approach. Uh, he wants students to succeed. He really pushes them to uh, he really pushes them to learn more than uh, what they than what they think they can learn. And uh, and he, I really saw a lot of faces when he was teaching them one on one. I really saw a lot of faces of uh, of, of excitement and. Uh, for the fact that they were actually uh, learning things that they didn't think they could actually learn, and in the end, they were actually teaching them the, teaching the the material themselves because Mr. McEwen was just helping them, was just pushing them in the right direction. But they were actually teaching them themselves, which was great to see. Uh, he was a, constru a constructivist approach, which uh, he focused more on the student than he focused on himself. And uh, instead of, like I said, instead of actually just lecturing to them, he uh, actually discussed the, discussed the problems with them and discussed uh, what the certain certain topics of geometry meant. Instead of instead of them just set, just sitting there and just watching and just sitting there silently, they were actually involved and talking with each other throughout the class. Uh, in conclusion, this was uh, this was a great evaluation for me to see. Uh, uh, it gave a little insight. Of course, not much. Thirty hours isn't much in the whole scheme of things. But it gave a little insight to what teachers actually do during the day and what they actually get to interact with with certain students, different personalities of students, and uh, it kind of gave me a little bit of what to look forward to. Uh, 
but uh, I, 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 I found some things that uh, that I actually want to incorporate into my classroom and some things that I obviously I want to leave out. But uh, he taught me he taught me a lot of things during class when uh, when he was teaching the students and even after class whenever he stayed with me and answered a quite, answered quite a few questions that I had for him about the profession of teaching. And uh, he gave me some great website sources and uh, some great advice.